Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Today, we're going to continue our study of the great book of John with the fourth chapter. So let's dive into the great book of John, the fourth chapter with the very first verse. It reads, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, too, though Jesus himself baptized not but his, but his disciples, Verse 3, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. 4, and he must needs go through Samaria. Now, I want to point out here how God knew what they were up to, because God knows all things. So the Lord was never, ever without knowledge of what his enemies were plotting and planning. He knows everything. He knew the Pharisees had sent spies out to follow him around. And so when they heard that he was baptizing more people than John the baptizer, his cousin, they had their spies right there watching and they went back and told the Pharisees. And then Jesus said, okay, it's time for us to move on. And he had to go to Samaria because Samaria was a part of a, country where the Samaritans dwelt, and these were people who were put there by a king who had taken over that land in the Old Testament, and they had accepted the religion of Judaism, but they were forever not accepted by the real Jews who were there. But Christ went there to show how eventually the gospel that he preached was going to be preach to even the Gentiles, the non-Jewish nations. So that's why he went there. Okay? Verse 5. It says, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar. And when you look up that word in the Strong's, it says a place in Palatine. And it was near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Verse 6, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. So Christ came to Jacob's well. He was tired, and he sat down on that well around the sixth hour of the day. Seven, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. So there came a woman of Samaria to draw some water from the well, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Eight, for his disciples were gone away unto the city, or gone away to the city to buy meat or to buy food. So he sent them into the city to get some food. Nine. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, or the woman then said the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou or you, being a Jew, asketh drink of me? How is it that you being a Jew ask 
me to give you a drink, in other words, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So she's like, how is it that you're talking to me? The Jews don't even talk to us. <laughs> 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, or said to her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. It says here in modern English, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me to drink or give me a drink, you would have asked of him and, and he would have given you living water. That's what he says in modern English. See, I translate these archaic words as I go to help people understand because beginners have a lot of trouble with the King James Version. And that's why I even recommend that as a beginner, you might use the English Standard Version or the New King James Version, but eventually you need to come back and learn these archaic words and learn how to translate them like I do because the King James Version is the most accurate translation in existence even to this day. So he said, if you knew the gift of God, what's the gift of God? The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. He says, if you knew about me, <laughs> I'm the gift of God who's going to make eternal life possible once I die for the sins of the world. You would have asked of me and I would have given you living water. 11. The woman saith unto him, the woman said to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. She said, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. I don't see no bucket in your hand. He said, she said, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? She said, you don't have no bucket to get no water out this well. So from where are you going to get this living water? 12. She says, art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? She says, are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank of it or drank of the water of it? himself and his children and his cattle? And these were legitimate questions. 13, Jesus answered and said to her, whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. So he put something on her mind. He says this physical water, people who drink that are going to quench their thirst temporarily and they're going to have to come back and get some more. He says, whoever drinks this water will get thirsty again eventually. Now, he's speaking spiritually now. He says in 14, But whosoever drinketh or drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. That's what he's talking about symbolically. So he's talking about how he's going to give the Holy Spirit to those who accept him and how that spirit is going to continuously help that individual be totally converted and transformed. This is what he's talking about. 15. The woman saith unto him, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither or come here to draw. So she didn't get it. She thought he was talking about literal water. So she said, give me some of that water so I don't have to come down here no more to get water out this well. That was 15. Verse 16, Jesus saith unto her, Jesus says to her, go call your husband and come hither. Go call your husband and come here. 17, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. 18, for you have had five husbands, 
And he whom you now have is not your husband. In that said you truly. Now I'm just translating these words into modern day English now because I can't possibly do this whole book reading them in the archaic English and then come back and read them in the modern day, modern day English. I started off that way so you guys would get the gist of what I was doing. So from now on, I'm just going to read those archaic words in modern day English. So this will help people who are studying along with me learn the modern day English equivalent of those archaic words. Okay. So Christ said, yeah, you just spoke the truth. You've had five husbands and the man you with now is not your husband. 19. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. She said, you have to be a prophet because that's the only way you could possibly know that. 20. She says, our fathers worship in this mountain and you say, referring to the Jews, that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. 21. Jesus said to her, woman, Believe me, the hour comes when you will neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. 22, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, and that is a fact. Salvation is of God's people, Israel, who were called Jews at the time of this writing. And we're not referring to those people over there in the Middle East right now claiming to be Jews because they are of the synagogue of Satan. We're talking about the true Jews, the Jews of the Bible, who were people of color. They were not Caucasians. Those Jews who were scattered all over the world because of their disobedience. So this is what he's talking about when he says salvation is of the Jews. Salvation came to God's people, Israel, the original Jews. And I'm not talking about these black Hebrew Israelite so-called people in America and all around claiming to be Jews. I'm not talking about them neither. God's true people have been mixed with all races under the sun. And God knows where they are and he knows who they are. That's who I'm talking about. And that's what the Bible is talking about. So he says salvation is of the Jews. God brought that salvation to his people, Israel, first, in other words. 23, Jesus says, but the hour comes, and now is when the true worshipers shall or will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. So it's not going to be about rituals and places. It's going to be about a personal relationship with God Almighty through his spirit. This is what he's talking about. 24, he says, God is his, is his spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. In other words, it has nothing to do with what group you affiliated with or what rituals you practice. That's not what it's about. It's all about the Holy Spirit indwelling the believer, allowing that person to know that God is real and that he sent his son Jesus to die for them and following the direction of the Holy Spirit. That's what he means when he says worship in spirit and in truth. 25, the woman said to him, I know that Messiah or Messiah comes, which is called Christ, which means the anointed one. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Now, this little lady had been studying the word of God. She's been studying the law of Moses and the books of the prophets because she knew what they said about the coming of the Messiah. 26, Jesus said to her, I that speak to you am he. And I know that must have blew her away. I know it would have blew me away if I was talking to a black Jew, a black Hebrew, and I told him that I know when the Messiah comes, he's going to tell us all things, and he said to me, I am he. 
Whoo! Wow. 27. And upon this came his disciples and marveled. That means they wondered that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, what seeketh you? Or what are you seeking with her? Or why talketh thou with her? Or why are you talking with her? So they saw Christ talking to this Samaritan woman, and they knew that the Jews had no dealing with Samaritans. And, and in that culture, they also looked down on women. So that made it even a devil mystery. Why is he talking to that woman and, and a Samaritan woman at that? But nobody said nothing to him about it. 28. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, 29. Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ, the anointed one, the long awaited savior of the world. So Christ in this woman obviously had a full discussion and he revealed a lot of things to her because she said, come see a man that told me everything I ever did. 30. Then they went out of the city and came to him. All these Samaritans came to hear Jesus. 31. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. So they had went into the city and got him some food, and they was trying to get him to eat something. 32, that was 31. But he said to them, I have meat or food to eat that you know not of. And at first they didn't understand it, but later they understood what he was talking about. 33. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Has any man brought him? ought to eat or brought him something to eat. So they didn't understand what he meant at first. 34, that was 33. Jesus said to them, my meat or my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So he told them plainly what he meant by that. 35, Jesus says to them, say not you, there are yet four months and then comes harvest. He says, Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Now he's speaking of harvesting souls, but he's comparing it to a real harvest, like wheat or barley or something. 36. And he that reaps receives wages and gathers fruit to life eternal that both he that sows and he that reaps may rejoice together, Jesus says. 37. And herein or in this is that saying true, one sows and another reaps. So he's preaching and teaching them at the same time. 38. He says, I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored but you are entered into their labors. Now, what he's talking about is how the prophets of God preach the coming of the Messiah, and the people knew of that because of their preaching, and now God was using his disciples, Jesus was using these disciples to continue that work. This is what he's talking about. 39, he says, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, which means bear witness, he told me all that I ever did. So a lot of them believed just because of what she said. Verse 40. So when the Samaritans would come to him, they besought him that he should tarry or stay with them, and he abode or remained there two days. So they say, please stay with us. Messiah, please, Lord, we're honored to have you here. So he stayed with him for two days, 41. And many more believed because of his own word. So there's a lot of times you're going to read in the four Gospels of how Christ broke protocol and did preach to Gentiles. But for the most part, his ministry was to the lost sheep of Israel. So this is one of those signs when he went among Gentiles and preached to them the gospel. 42, 
and said to the woman, Now we believe not because of your saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Wow. So the Holy Spirit had opened it up to the Samaritans that Jesus Christ was the anointed king of God's soon-to-be kingdom and the savior of the entire world. Whoo! 43. Now, after two days, he departed from that place and went into Galilee. So after he did what the Lord had led him to Samaria to do, he went back to Galilee, 44. For Jesus himself testified or bear witness that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So he bypassed his own country at first because they didn't receive him there greatly. A lot of people didn't. 45. Then when he was coming to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went to the feast. So they remembered the miracles that they saw. 46. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain noble man whose son was sick at Capernaum. 47. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. 48. Then said Jesus to him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. So he knew that these people only wanted to see some miracle. <laughs> and he's like, that's the only way you're going to believe. 49. The nobleman said to him, sir, come down or my son die. He says, come down or my son is going to die. He says, please, come down before my son dies. 50. Jesus said to him, go your way. Your son lives. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken to him. And he went his way. 51. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. 52. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. 53. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said, to him, your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole house. Wow. So Christ like, I don't have time to come down there, man. Go home, your son lives. So he granted his request without him going down there because he can do all things. And so when the man went home and the servants met him and told him, his son is living he asked, about what time did it happen? And he remembered it was the exact same time that Jesus told him, your son lives, go home. And last but not least, 54. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. So the second miracle he did when he came out of Judea into Galilee. It's very, very important, brothers and sisters, that you study to show yourself approved unto God. A work man that needed not to be ashamed. And if you're a woman, a work woman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And so because of that miracle, that man became a believer and he told his whole house about what Jesus did. And they all became believers. So be sure not to miss the next Bible study when we go into the fifth chapter of this great book of John. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of 
any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly and this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, Porter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. It's godwear.store. So please check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.